We're delighted to have in studio Dr. Beth Perrick. And Beth, you are the uh, president of GRF, a uh, uh, organization that we're very familiar with here at Laguna Woods Village. <laughs> yes. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. But let's get acquainted with you uh, okay. first. Uh, where did you begin life's journey? I was born in Albion, New York, a town of about 3,000 people, okay. <laughs> and lived there till I was 15, and then we moved to Canandaigua, a big town of 9,000. Okay, <laughs> that I've never heard of. <laughs> that you've never heard. It's one of the Finger Lakes. It's beautiful. Ah, area. beautiful really area. beautiful. And uh, you went to schools, public schools there, I suppose? Yes. And then college? And then college, I went to an all-girls Catholic college really? in, outside of Rochester in Pittsford, New York, uh -huh. called Nazareth College. Okay. And I got my bachelor's degree in English there. All right. And speech and drama was my minor. Really? And then, so, that, so then the rest of the education part, I, went, I got my master's at uh, SUNY State University, right. New York, at Brockport. Okay. And... Then, to finish off my education, I got a Ph.D. in Curriculum and Instructional Leadership mm -hmm. at USC here right. in Southern California. So somewhere along the line, you went from New York to California. My girlfriend talked me into signing up, filling out forms for Department of Defense schools. Ah. And I just really didn't want to leave. I just loved where I was teaching, mm -hmm. and I loved... The area, I just have it, but I did it for her, and guess what? <laughs> you got accepted. <laughs> interviewed, and a couple weeks later, I got the call, and I was accepted. And you have to, uh, you have to agree to it within forty-eight hours, oh, whether wow. you'll come or not. So, yeah. I agreed to it, and she didn't get her notice until four or five months later, and exactly. she'd already signed a contract. So, by myself, I went to Germany. So you uh, uh, were assigned to teach in a. Uh, uh, a school for military dependents, right. I presume, in Germany. Department of Defense School in Worms, Germany. What was that like? That was a lot of fun. I bet. Teachers from all different parts of the United States, uh -huh. and and we were able to hop in the car and drive to Paris for the weekend, oh, or <laughs> go up to Berlin, or different things that mm -hmm. we were able to do. Lots of fun. Wow. And of course, there were some handsome officers there. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I met one of them oh, who see. just happened to be a UCLA graduate. Yeah. I met that handsome young lieutenant, and he went to Vietnam. Oh. And when he came back a year or so after that, we mm -hmm. got married. And where did you settle after that? I have the same house that we bought when we were first born, first born, first married. <laughs> <laughs> And it's in Granada Hills. Oh, okay. So was he a Californian? He was L.A., born and raised in right. UCLA, and he was a football coach. Oh. And he was, when we were, got married, he had begun working on his master's. And so I was teaching school in Saugus Union School District, which is in the Santa Clarita Valley. And you were teaching English, were you? Or? No, I taught the little ones most of the time. So you, you did this for a number of years, and you mentioned that uh, uh, earlier that you got into a doctoral program at USC. What motivated that? You know, that's a good question. What did motivate that? I just, <laughs> I just was, the, the honest-to-goodness truth was my husband was coaching football at USC, uh -huh. and I could get full full tuition remission oh. if I took a sabbatical for half a year. So I said, okay, I'll take a half year because our daughter was three years old. Uh -huh. And I thought, this is wonderful. And I can just take some classes and have some fun. Well, as it happened, I did take some classes and had some fun. And you liked it. And I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was hooked. Yeah. So I just continued and got my... Um, PhD and and my administrative credential. I loved the research. I, I to this day love the research. Uh, um, you've had a lot of experience in the public school system and administration, and uh, and and then you uh, got into college uh, level teaching yourself. Yes. How did that happen? Serendipity. <laughs> <laughs> what I did was I was ready to just retire after being a district office administrator. 
I thought, you know what, I think I'm just going to retire from K-8. And I did, and I thought, I can just teach a class here or there in a mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. And I had um, co-authored a book um, on how to, on reading strategies and helping teachers to be able to pass the RECA exam, which is the exam that you had to pass to get your elementary credential oh. in California. Oh. And then... I got a call from this university, that university, would you teach this, would you mm -hmm. teach that? Mm -hmm. And then that was just one year. And then at the end of the year, APU asked me to interview Azusa Pacific University. Right. So I interviewed and got a full-time job with them. Okay. And, so and you I did thought you were retired and, and I, now you're teaching yes, college. Yes, and I loved it. Yeah. I, I loved it. It was graduate school, so <clears> you <throat> were teaching at night and had meetings during the day, but it still was wonderful. Hmm. Well, Beth, I know that somewhere along the line you lost your husband. Yes, yes. He passed away in 2004. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. I don't have to tell any of the folks <laughs> around here in Laguna Woods that it, it's very difficult to yeah. lose a spouse. We'd been married for 38 years. No and kidding. Yeah. Was, he was a wonderful guy. And you have children? Yes, we have three children, mm -hmm. two boys and a girl. Yeah. And then somewhere along the line, I know that you remarried because I know your husband, John Perrick. Yes, yes. How did that happen? Well, John lived right around the corner from me. Okay. And I knew, I knew Darlene, his wife, and what she she was, I'd see her in the grocery store all the time shopping. Mm -hmm. They have their boy John was a big boy, and our boys are big boys. So it was forever big grocery carts, and sometimes <laughs> each of us would have two carts oh because my. there's so much food that the boys eat. And I knew her, and and John's daughter Kelly would come over and swim in the pool with my son Sean, and they were on the same little league team together, Kelly and Sean. So. I knew I knew uh, Darlene and the children uh -huh. a lot more than I knew John uh -huh. because he was an actor and gone a lot. Right. <laughs> and I got to meet him when his son was being recruited for USC by my husband. Oh, okay. And so <laughs> we, the, at that time, the coaches at least one time invited the the players' parents to go out to dinner and talk, and so mm -hmm. I got to meet him then. Mm -hmm. And then they went to our church, and so okay. they were in Bible study with me. Oh, so a very good place to uh, meet a spouse. A good place. I did the same, actually. Yeah, really, it, it is a good place. <laughs> and then, um, so three years after, two years after John had, no. Two years after Foster had passed away, John's wife, Darlene, passed uh -huh. away. Uh -huh. so, so that was 2006. And so sometime during that next year, we began dating because we both did the scripture readings at church and we right. were in Bible study. Had so a we lot in common. Had a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So um, then we were married and moved to Laguna Woods. Very good. So that gets you here, yes. And uh, and and now uh, you moved to Lago to uh, Laguna Woods. What year? Um, two thousand and seven. Okay, so so now twelve years later, yes. uh, you are the president of the Golden Rain Foundation, which yes. is uh, uh, kind of the highest uh, position in the uh, in, in this uh, area. How did how did that happen? Did you how did you get into administration and all of that? Okay, so the presidents of the mutuals mm -hmm. and the president of JRF are all we're all you know we're the president of our of our associations or of our boards. So I'm not really above them. <clears throat> I'm in line with them. Right, right. Um, and how did it happen? Um, I was. Um, I suppose you must have uh, been coaxed to run for I, an officer of one of I the I was. That's how it happened. And mm -hmm. I, John Parker was uh, president, and then Tom Circle was president, and under both of them, I was first vice president. Oh. And then Tom was leaving, and who would like to be president? And, and, and this is president of? GRF. Oh, of GRF, okay. And so... 
I prayed on it because uh -huh. it's a, it's a time consuming situation, and no so I decided I would like to run for it. And thankfully, um, my peers accepted, and they said, "Do you want to be president?" And they voted for me. So hmm. here I am. <laughs> here you are. All right. Well, just for the sake of the viewers and. Uh, I've been here six years. I'm not sure I have this all straight in my mind yet because it's kind of a complicated uh, governments, uh, governance that we have here. But we have several uh, groups that are in charge of the they're called housing mutuals. Right. I, I live in United, and yeah. uh, it's and it has a board that's elected popularly. Yes. Uh, by by the residents of United, and there are what three or four other. Then uh, there's two more. So there's Third Mutual, mm -hmm. and then the Towers, and that's um, 50 units. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the housing mutuals are in charge of pretty much all the decisions that have to do with housing, I presume. Yes. And, and uh, does that also include uh, things like trash pickup and, and uh, uh, roads and all of that? or? Trash pickup and roads would be would be GRF. Okay. So they're they're in charge for it. United is in charge of the co-ops, mm -hmm. and Third is in charge of the um, condos. Yeah. And I the see. and it's condos that are in the towers also mutual right, fifty. I see. Okay. And so what GRF does is everything else. So. So everything are, that's not covered by uh, by the housing mutuals is covered by by uh, GRF. Pretty much the. All of the amenities and the facilities and the roads, the streets. Uh -huh. so, so that's yeah. why when you see committee meetings, they're GRF committees because GRF, for example, um, CAC committee, the recreation department. Mm -hmm. So the recreation department supervises all activities and and clubhouses, so mm -hmm. that's a strong committee for GRF. Mm -hmm. And then there's mobility with the buses, et cetera. There's, mm -hmm. Those are GRF So there's, GRF is in charge of a whole lot. Yes. Of, uh, uh, that's here. Now, if I understand it correctly, the GRF uh, officers are not directly elected by the, by the residents, is that right? They're elected by, by the, 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 the housing mutual boards, do I have yes. that right? That's absolutely correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, so if, if you would like to serve on GRF, first get elected to, uh, to the Housing Mutual and, and get them to elect you to the, to the GRF. There isn't that exclusivity. It's, you, you can apply for GRF board without having been on the oh, housing boards. Oh, you can? Yes. Oh. And we will have at least one position open I see. This year, so if anyone would like to, mm -hmm. please keep your eye on um, the globe for ideas. For mm -hmm. I know that I know that the mutuals will have openings too, because everyone is a, we're all elected on a three-year cycle. So each year, mm -hmm. there's you know a, a several people that will be leaving. Mm -hmm. We've been saying GRF. Uh, without explaining what it is, but uh, that stands for Golden Rain Foundation. Where yes. did that name come from? There's a Golden Rain tree, and that's okay. where it came from. Then there's a Golden Rain tree planted here. There's a wonderful book that came out on our 50 year anniversary a mm -hmm. couple of years ago, and that's in the History Center. I see. Yes. You can, you can see it there, and I don't know if they still have any that you could buy, and it talks about that Golden Rain tree. So, so the uh, creator of, of, of the uh, organization named it for a tree that he particularly liked. Yes, yes. Right. In your, in your time here, uh, especially your time uh, with GRF, what kind of changes have you, have you seen? Oh, that's a really good question. One of the things that we have tried to work on is being together, working together. And so we've really 
put together a strong group of uh, pres presidents meeting, the presidents of all the boards meeting, and sharing ideas and saying how can we um, assist one another or what direction do we want to be taking. And, and then under the leadership of Jeff Parker and Siobhan with VMS, mm -hmm. we've been able to work together and form a strategic plan for for the whole community. Mm -hmm. And then each one of us and the different boards have our own individual unique um, strategic plan that we're looking at. So, so to answer your question, the biggest thing that I can see is the concept of working together mm -hmm. and trying to, to, be, have, to be a team and to help one another. As, and, as opposed to? As opposed to? Being oppositional. And just, yes, okay, so I don't need to think about that because that's your problem. Or, I, I think I understand, check me on, on this, that, that uh, uh, VMS is the uh, village management services, do I have yes. that right? Is, yes. is the company that's hired to actually execute the, the plans that and policies that GRF sets in, in force, is that right? Yes, yes. And, and the, Jeff the Parker is the president of, yes. of VMS. Right. So, so uh, uh, VMS actually hires most of the staff. Yes, v VMS. The CEO is Jeff and the COO is Siobhan Foster. Ah. And they, they hire, with the help of the VMS board, uh -huh. hire the staff and oversee the staff mm -hmm. and assist the staff. And we're the policy people. Right. We set policy. And, and all of us have the same goal of what's best for the village. What can we do that's best for the village? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else are you involved with here, Beth? Well, I do like to go to the circuit training, the six o'clock circuit oh training, goodness. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> That's You're something. Ambitious. And I'm interested in the theater because my husband is an actor, so I get to see him on stage sometimes. Uh -huh. And I am really involved with the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. I'm the vice president there. Okay. And that's... Explain the, just in briefly what the foundation is. The foundation is a charitable group here in the village, and our motto is neighbors helping neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is people in, in the community give us money, and working through social services, social services, of course, helps our citizens. And if they have a citizen that's having difficulty, it's an emergency need, we're not ongoing help. Mm -hmm. They have someone who can't pay their electric bill this month, mm -hmm. then they write an email to the president, Marcy Scheinwald, and to myself as vice president, mm -hmm. and we review it and wow. we okay the payment of it. One of the things that's really been happening in the past couple of years is the legacy treatment that we have. And so mm. several people have remembered us in their will, ah. which, is, which is really great. Wonderful. Someone left their entire manor to us, wow. which was great. Yeah. So that's a, that's a piece of my heart there, the foundation. Wow. And another piece of my heart is the Thrive group. That's yeah. a... That's an ad hoc um, committee of which I'm a part. Of which <laughs> you are a big part, Tom. And we work with the video club and the camera club and the TV, as well as all of the communication department with the Globe and what's up in the village, mm -hmm. whatnot. Anyway, and our goal is to to demonstrate how are people thriving in the community right. what are you, what are you doing that you're really enjoying life living mm -hmm. here in the community trying to keep and, people from just sitting home and watching tv and get right. them out and, and and doing things right. by by telling them about what others are doing is that do i have that right that's that's a big part about it and, and of course the latest project that was headed by lucy parker yes. uh -huh. um was the uh, and mark Mark Rabinovich, and that was people over 100 years yeah. of age here in the village, yeah. and they interviewed 
15 people right. and they took the picture of today what that person looks like and then put it side by side with a picture of them long ago from a high school photo. A lot, a lot of fun to do that, a lot of amazing uh, stories and people. That, yes, was, that was a it, great project. We made, uh, we made videos of that too, which yes. are being run on, on uh, Channel 6. What would you personally like to see or have goals for the future development of the, of the village? What, what direction should we be heading in? Cost sharing is such an important concept here in the village. Mm -hmm. And I've heard it since I've been on the third board and then been on the GRF board. And you know what, Tom? Every person out there has a different concept of what is this all about. Right. And so we decided to, that we were going to form a committee. So, so um, it was my pleasure to appoint Diane Phelps, our treasurer, mm -hmm. as the lead of that. Um, it's an ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. and, and Annette Sowell is working with her. And Annette's part of it is coming together with what are the different versions of cost sharing. What could that look like? Mm -hmm. What is the concept mm -hmm. and what does it look like? And doing some research in that arena. And Diane's idea is, okay, with thinking of the concept of cost sharing, then how do we get revenue? What are some ways that we can get revenue and think about not raising the assessments? Mm -hmm. And because that's something that you hear all the time, please don't raise the assessments. But, but what's happening is this is life and the cost of things go up. And so mm -hmm. it ends up you do have to raise assessments at times. So what can we do to maybe offset that a bit so mm -hmm. that Diane's committee is working on that part? Uh, cost sharing is, as I understand it, well, I'm, I'm on the board of the California Club, for example, uh -huh. and the California Club has dinner dances nine months out of the year, and, uh, and we pay uh, rental for the, I guess you call it rental, for the, for the use of Clubhouse 5 and, mm -hmm. and for the facilities there and all of that, and a couple of years ago, the rental went up. Uh -huh. And that was a cost-sharing decision, I think. And, and uh, so some of the cost of operating Clubhouse 5 is borne by the people who use it directly, mm -hmm. and some of it is borne by all, all, the, rest all of us. the rest of us. Yes. And so the question is, what part of the overall cost should be borne by those who use it versus, versus the whole do I have the? Do I have the? Right. The we had a percentage there? walking into that this year, and the percentage was eighty-two percent. All of us chip okay. in on in everything in in what happens in golf and in tennis and you know in rental of clubhouses and mm -hmm. in the pools and everything. So it was eighty-two twelve. Did I eighty-two eighteen? Eighty-two eighty-two eighteen, and now it's eighty. Well, you know, 80, 80 20. 20. Yeah. Now it's 80 20. Okay. So the, the, the cost has gone up, uh, but the individual clubs or groups or whatever will have to pay right. by 2%. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and you see that trend continuing, of a continuing uh, for the, for the uh, share of the cost that the users pay to continue to increase, or do you have a sense of where that's going? You know, that's why we formed the committee. Okay. We, and, you know, it was put forth that we do 50-50, uh -huh. and the community was just like, what? That's not good. <laughs> Cost sharing. and Because a lot of clubs have gotten used to charging very little in right. addition to, to different things, because... Uh, 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 so, so that would increase their cost to where they... Yes. Would have to maybe double what they charge uh, yes. for the event. Yeah. So that's why this committee that is being chaired by Diane hopefully will be able to do the research on different forms of cost sharing, mm -hmm. how it can be, and then what can we do to help offset it by 
revenue. I mean, it's mm. not like we're going to put a gas station on the corner or something like that. Right. We're not going to do something like that, but we will be doing some research on mm. how to make money. One of the ways that is already okayed, that just 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 beginning stages, is the um, community fund, the village community fund, VCF. Oh yes, right. And what they're doing, they're they're. Um, they're a charitable organization, mm -hmm. and, and once we get it figured out how it will work, we will be able to offer naming possibilities. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. One of the things that was mentioned was um, naming if we needed a new sound system in the small theater that we're talking mm -hmm. about having, what would that be? Or So if somebody wanted to give... Fifty thousand dollars, or whatever the cost would be, you could name it uh, for for them, or, or or maybe at a memorial. Right. Is that the idea? Yes, and and <clears throat> maybe maybe in the the video club, we the a person would be interested in the video club, and you would need to have um, a new camera. And seems I, likely. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure of the possibilities, but I right. know that we now have. We now have the tool in place where we right. will be able to do that and it will begin growing. The video club actually, um, since you mentioned that, was a recipient of, of the, the first project that approved by this, uh, by this group. Yes. And uh, uh, since it is incorporated as a not-for-profit organization, it's able to give tax-deductible receipts yes. and so we were able to raise our target is two thousand dollars to buy some furniture for our uh, studio yes yes so see that's kind of the idea that we're looking into and how to how to raise funds and get things that we would want that the clubs would want that that would be needed in the community whatever mm -hmm. and be able to get that without going into raise your assessment because we have to do X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah, and raising the assessments is painful because uh, over, over the years it, it could force people out who, who have a fixed incomes yes. and uh, that, that, that doesn't increase. So, so it's uh, difficult to raise assessments, I'm sure. Yes, uh, yes. Well, Beth, thank you so much uh, for your time today and for your work. I'm sure that uh, takes a, a lot of time, a lot of dedication to uh, serve in this position. And, and uh, I, I love your concept of collegiality, of, of trying to work cooperatively instead of, you know, being at loggerheads with each other and mm -hmm. uh, wish you the, uh, the best in your, in your uh, position. Thank you. We've been talking with uh, uh, Dr. Beth Perrick, who is the uh, president of the Golden Rain Foundation.